Okay, we're going to continue discussing our titanium meteorite, how we know it is a meteorite, even though it doesn't share the characteristics of a class three iron nickel meteorite, we know that it is a meteorite that currently is unclassifiable because there simply is no category for non-iron nickel meteorites, metallic meteorites. So if you look real close here, you see a tiny speck there. It's, it's, it's about the, the diameter of the pencil lead. A tiny speck is actually a tiny meteorite. And this tiny meteorite has hit the larger object with enough velocity that it welded itself to the surface. And if you look over here, there's another one, a little dark one. And in fact, if you look up here, there's one there. And if you're looking closely, you're already picking up on them they're all over the place. Here's another one and another one here. Here's sort of a, a long skinny one and this is iron up in this area so that that was a uh, and here's some tiny ones here and as we move this object around and look at the various sides of it we will discover that there are thousands of these little little micrometeorites embedded, welded to the surface, sometimes on top of each other, and sometimes just welded onto a smooth surface. And the only way that they could they could attach themselves like that is if they're traveling at a velocity that is high enough that would introduce a melted state when they impact and that melted state would then allow them to fuse to weld to the surface now on the on the earth objects normally Objects do not travel at more than seven to eight kilometers per second. And those objects that are traveling at that speed have been fired out of a light gas gun and are traveling at extreme speeds because we have shot them out of a gun. In the natural environment of the Earth, there is nothing that travels at that speed. No particles. It just simply doesn't happen. But in space, we commonly see objects traveling at 18 kilometers per second up to 78 kilometers per second. So when we're looking at, at this meteorite, and we're looking at it in an enlarged way, and we see these tiny specks that are reflective, each of these under a digital microscope shows up enlarged. They look like boulders boulders that have struck and welded themselves into place and have not moved since they were welded to the surface and and sometimes these boulders these these micrometeorites they came in and they hit the surface and they hit the surface in an area that was that was vulnerable to to impact from from other objects 
And when that happened, like this area here is vulnerable to impacts. When those micrometeorites attached to the surface, sometimes they were smashed down because larger objects were hitting and hammering them into the surface, hammering them flat. But wherever there's ridges protecting the micrometeorites, you see the micrometeorites still clinging on to the surface, still welded in place, having been protected by the ridges around them, the fact that they were in a small groove or they were in a depression. And so we see different Sometimes we see that the, that the micrometeorites are clear and evident and stacked on top of one another and abundant. Other times we look at the surface area and see that it is pummeled. And of course, under, a, under the digital microscope, we see an incredible amount of detail. Um, we can see objects as small as as a few micron that are embedded into the surface, that are welded to the surface, that came in at incredibly high speeds, extraordinarily high speeds, and simply welded themselves to the surface, and at other times were smashed flat, were, were hammered by objects that were larger and and were able to impact them because they were not protected. Tiny meteorites here, here. See this one in how it's, it's in sort of a crack there in a spot that is not vulnerable. And this one over here, this one here in a, in a little meteorite blast crater. And so as we begin to look at this object, we ask a question, and, and it's appropriate for scientists to ask that. Is it possible that this piece of titanium came from, did it come from the Earth? Was it, did it come from a volcano or from some kind of a vein in the Earth? Is there a place where, where such pieces of titanium are seen and what we know today is titanium does not form elemental metal does not take on an elemental metal form naturally on the earth in other words unlike gold or unlike silver, or unlike copper that is found in elemental form and can be dug out of the ground, titanium cannot be. And the reason is, is that titanium does not come out of its ore simply by using heat. Titanium, in order to end up with a piece of titanium metal, elemental titanium, on the earth, it requires that we would apply electricity to a melted solution of titanium ore. And through electrolysis, we could cause the atoms of titanium that are melted in the solution to attach themselves onto an electrode. And once the last atom has attached itself, that electrode is lifted out of the molten ore solution and we have metallic titanium in a pure form. But there is no natural process for titanium metal to be created on the earth. 
Thank you for watching this episode. We will continue.